We're now three hours out from Donald Trump's biggest speech of the year. But while he may want to focus on the State of the Union, I can tell you there's a lot of other news tonight. Rarely do presidents address the nation under this kind of cloud. The White House and campaign effectively under investigation, but also probes into Trump's business foundation and now the transition team and the committee that planned his inauguration. Federal prosecutors subpoenaing the inaugural committee, demanding documents on donors and spending. These subpoenas are coming from the federal prosecutors in New York. It's an offshoot of the investigation into Trump's guilty former lawyer, Michael Cohen. Some of his closest allies have long warned this could be more damaging, carry more risk than even the Mueller probe. I'm joined by former federal prosecutor Guy Lewis, who has worked with Mueller, Comey, Rosenstein, and more at the DOJ, and Steve Kerrigan, who is president and CEO of both of President Obama's inaugural committees. Uh, so before we get to what the feds are looking for, I just want to ask you, based on what is publicly known about the way this committee ran and the way it raised and spent money, does it look normal to you? Does it look clean or does it look problematic? It hasn't looked normal from day one. I mean, it, the way they set up their inaugural committee, how much they raised, how they seemingly raised it, uh, and frankly, how, they, how much they've spent. Um, was really a recipe for corruption from the very beginning. And the, the structure, how they were able to uh, overspend at the Trump Hotel, how they don't, frankly, under law, they don't report their expenditures, um, uh, allowed that for a real opportunity for corruption, for um, uh, illegal activity, for this really to be an inaugural slush fund, really, because when you run for president uh, not under the normal Republican system, which he did, really, without raising normal Republican dollars, the best way to ingratiate yourself to a new president is to give unlimited unfettered amounts of money to his inaugural. Right, so that there's, there's a concern here about a potential yeah. corruption, even if it wasn't uh, felonies yet, which we'll get to. Listen right. to Chris Christie uh, really blasting the people who were Trump's version of you, except yeah. uh, you've so far uh, not been accused of anything <laughs> like this. Take a right. look. So. Rick Gates was running the inaugural. Inaugural, right. Rick Gates was running the inaugural, and Rick Dearborn was running the day-to-day -day of the transition. I mean, you couldn't have found two worst people. Gates is now a criminal um, and, and, and cooperating with the federal government. A guy, uh, that's a, a former prosecutor like yourself talking about the people. Uh, what's important here in the story? Well, you got to look at it, Ari. Take a step back. Um, follow the money. I mean, that's what the prosecutors in Manhattan are going to be doing. Follow the money. And when you put a hundred million dollars through a system, and as Steve was talking about, very few checks and balances, you're going to see problems. Whether it's corruption or not, it remains to be seen. But look what they've done. They've, they've got Cohen, former lawyer who's testified. He certainly knows some secrets, right? They've immunized Alan Wasselberg, who's the CFO at the Trump Organization. Ari, why did they immunize him? Why did he need immunity? There's got to be issues there. And now these fastballs to the head, these subpoenas, where they're giving out, they're getting documents, they're interviewing witnesses. There's going to be more um, issues come up, and I think yeah. it's a problem for uh, Trump and Trump's lawyers. Take a look at one example, which is that Gates allegedly was asking people, could you just, you know, route around the structure and just give money uh, directly from donors, uh, which would apparently violate at least disclosure rules. Uh, do you see that as the kind of thing that anyone could be indicted for, Guy? Absolutely. In fact, if you look at the subpoena um, that was first, I think, uh, uh, CNN got a hold of, it lists the crimes, some of the crimes, Ari, that they're investigating, conspiracy, financial crimes. And look, at these guys in Manhattan, you don't think they know how to investigate, look at a financial balance sheet and investigate financial crimes? That's their bread and butter. Right. That's what they do every day. And, Steve, and so, again, I think it's big problems. Yeah, and Steve, just look at the amount of money spent, uh, 40 and $50 million yeah. range for Bush and Obama. Trump, $107 right. million. Why, why so much more money? The only reason for that is either colossal mismanagement, which this president's supposed to be great at managing and all his people are supposed to be, or there is a colossal amount of graft involved in this. I mean, their concert at the Lincoln Memorial cost five times what our concert cost in 2009, and we had almost a million people attend it. It, it really is, it amounts to either colossal mismanagement you're, you're or... You're drawing attention to the fact that more people... 
attended your inaugural than both Trump's? Both of our inaugurations. Do you do that just to bother him or I to make yourself feel good? I can. <laughs> well, both reasons. Can it be both? I don't it know. Can be both reasons. Uh, really, this is a, a matter of he did probably a quarter of the events that we did and the Bush inaugurals did uh, for twice as much money uh, with about a third of the staff that we had. I mean, there is there's something there, and I'm glad that the SDNY and others and, frankly, uh, shows like yours aren't letting up on this because I've been talking about this on Twitter for 746 days that if you spend $107 million on an inauguration of that caliber, right. there's something wrong. Well, you've been all over it, but I heard most people don't read your tweets. <laughs> Well, if you do, that would be helpful. Well, we listen Steve to you. Carrick, we we read even longer than tweet length. Uh, I just, it always sounds a little plaintive when someone's like, I, I tweeted about I this once. I seriously haven't, though. <laughs> um, a Not guy, once, 746 times. Many it's times. Good. Guy really good. on the law, Steve having been there, thanks to both of you. Thank you. Appreciate it on a big night. Now, we got a Democrat.